Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for NBA DFS content, price fix content, all that good stuff. They all get posted on, oh, not that one, this summer right here. I'll have a link down below. I make updates with all the news that comes out throughout the day. You can ask me questions about the slate, pretty much anything you need. This will be linked down below. You can do talk strategy with people, just talk about pretty much anything. Um, so that'll be linked down below. And if you have ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can get a hold of me on Twitter right there. All right, so uh, let's get into my lineup from tonight. Pretty good night tonight. Um, if you're looking for more in-depth content, prize picks, books, uh, cores for main slate, night slate videos, all that good stuff, I'll have my Discord link down below. But before I get into my lineup, just wanted to show, it was, it was a really, really solid night overall. We had some good winners. Charred, this guy, um, had a nice night. Um, nice sixth place there. Um, Little small wins there. That's always nice. Um, cashing with three injuries. That's that's nice. Um, what hundred dollars into five hundred dollars? That's that's always nice. Um, more stuff there. Um, a fourth place there. A first place there. Um, Tyler had a nice day. Two hundred dollars and eighteen hundred dollars. Um, re really great stuff today. <laughs> um, but. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about my lineup. Let's talk about the core that I had for today. So my core today was Giannis Antetokounmpo, Campaign, Josh Giddy, and I did have Gordon Hayward in the core, and then I told everyone once he wasn't starting to get off him. Um, he was a really, really bad play off of the bench today. So um, once we got the news that Jalen Williams and Aaron Wiggins were starting, I made it a priority to get to Jalen Williams in my lineup. I thought it was a really, really good play. Um, he was low-owned. Um, Sensible, another value play that just carried my lineup. If it wasn't for the Patrick Beverly injury and Josh Giddy just being horrible and uh, Dagnall, is that how you say his name? Mark Dagnall absolutely trolling, I probably win. I probably win this GPP. Just super, because the winner, they don't have Giddy. Um, Pat Bev was on pace to go for like 30 fantasy points before he got injured. So like brutal stuff there. I mean, it's nice to have a good night again, um, but it could have been so, so much more, right? Um, so that's the painful part. Very, very painful part. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys had a great night and let's get into this slate. We got a nice seven or eight gamer for tomorrow. Let me just refresh underdog, see if there's any updates before we get into this. Last I looked five minutes ago. 1B is just absolutely incredible. I agree. And I th think that's it. All right. Let's get into the slate. Lakers at Washington. You have a phenomenal matchup here for Lakers. It's a back-to-back here. -back but, yeah, I mean, I don't see how you don't really, really like both Anthony Davis and LeBron. Looking at the spin-ups on the slate, I do think they stand out as two of the better spin-ups on the slate. You have DeJounte Murray, who I absolutely love. You have a lot of really good spin-ups. I think AD and LeBron both look great, even at their price points. I know they're both above 10K now, but really good spot. It's just, can Washington keep this game competitive? I'm not entirely sure. Washington, they could be super thin tomorrow. So there's definitely going to be potential blowout risk in this game already. And then if they're all out, even more blowout risk. Like... Yeah, I think they both look great if you think this game does stay competitive. I always do prefer Anthony Davis to LeBron, though. D'Lo, Reeves, they both flash the ceiling, but I would say they're both priced right. I don't think I'm going to go out of my way to prioritize any of them. They'll be low owned. They're in play for large field GPPs for me, but at their price points, I think it's single entry personally for me. I, I'm going to find it hard to get to either of them at their price points. I know D'Lo had a really, really nice game tonight. He cashed um, his points prop for me. That was nice. And uh, Rui Hashimura, I mean, this price point, no thank you. Um, he is just way overpriced. I don't know if I get to the value here either. Maybe, you know, Lakers do sit someone tomorrow um, because they're going up against Washington. Maybe they sit like one of LeBron or idiots back to back, right? Um, so we will see. If if they do sit someone, I'll always make updates on the subreddit, on what that change is, who I like, et cetera, with players in, out, all that good stuff. So I will update if we do get a chance of like one of them sitting. Moving on to the Wizards. So first off, Bagley got injured tonight. Rashawn Holmes was out tonight. Tyce Jones was out tonight. Kyle Kuzma was out tonight. Say we get all these players out. 
in a good matchup going up against the Lakers, there is going to be a decent amount to like here. I'm going to like Denny. I'm going to like Poole. I'm going to like Kispert. Poole will probably be my favorite point per dollar, but it's a great spot for all three of them. These three guys, they're going to run the offense. They're going to be the highest usage players in this offense. And then we got to talk about, about the value here. Today, they started Anthony Gill. And we also have to talk about who is going to be available for this team. So they only had nine active guys tonight, I believe, because they had a G League game. So a lot of guys were in the G League. So for figuring out who's going to be available tomorrow for the Wizards is going to be extremely, extremely important because they only had, I believe, nine guys tonight. So that's going to be important. But let's say we have a similar situation to tomorrow that happened tonight and they only have those nine guys available and with now Bagley out. So this situation is if all these guys that were not available are not available tonight aren't available for tomorrow. So same guys. This is what I will say. I really like all three of the main guys. Vucevic started the second half for Marvin Bagley. He'd be a really good value at 3K. Gill started today. He'd be a very good value at 3.4K. Uh, Jared Butler would have to get a decent amount of run. He'd be a solid value. And then, you know, Davis will get run. Eugene Amore was available. He'd have to play a bit more. He'd be in play. And then... Um, Keep an eye on who's available. If we get a situation where like all these guys are available, I'm sure like someone else will start. We'll see. I'll make updates on Reddit. This is the first game of the night. So it's kind of hard to talk about right now with not knowing who is available and all the good stuff. If we get for some reason everyone in, then you know I still have interest in Kuzma. I still have interest in Pool. A kiss will probably be priced right. We'll see if anyone's on some type of limits, etc. Like I said, Bagley got hurt tonight. If Bagley's out and they start Holmes at 4.6k, I really like Holmes for value. And then it's just going to be a wait and see approach on who's available and stuff like that. So keep an eye on that. We could definitely have a ton of value there for Washington, pending who's available. Moving on to Portland. Good matchup here. Jeremy Grant is going to remain doubtful for this game. I like quite a bit here. DeAndre Ayton at 7.6k playing huge minutes. Portland's running a really, really tight rotation of late. I like Ayton quite a bit in a phenomenal matchup going up against Charlotte. Banton, Scoot, they're both playing huge minutes. Scoot's getting getting into foul trouble every game, but he should play 40 minutes. He'll play blowout too. I like him quite a bit. Ban, I think, is solid. I prefer Scoot personally, but there's always foul risk with Scoot. Jabari Walker should see big, big minutes. He's a decent value play. Rupert's playable. Chris Murray is playable. Personally, I prefer Jabari Walker, but they're both playable. Don't know if it go to much else here, though, but they're going to run a tight rotation with the main guys. And this is another one where it's just tough to say right now. We have Miles Bridges, Brandon Miller, Mitchich, Graham Williams, all questionable. It's just tough to say right now. We do have Nick Richards back, though. Um, if they're all out, I don't even know what the starting lineup they go with. It, it would probably be like what? Trey Mant, Nick Richards. Do they start like a Bryce McGowan's? A Bryce McGowan's? I know in the past, Sleeky Black. Okay, he's in the G League. Um, I know in the past they would start Leaky Black, but it looks like he's in the G League. So, Trey Mant, Nick Richards, what, like, Bertons? Bryce McGowan's? They could do a number of things. Luckily, this is the first game. But if they're all out, there's going to be a lot to like. Trey Mant, first off, would look great at 5.5. He'd be one of the best mid-range players in this league. I would absolutely love him for some reason, all these guys out. Poku, Bertans would both be very solid values. Um, I don't know. If Bryce McGowan starts, sure, you can go there. Um, and then we'll just see who's available. It's tough to say. Nick Smith Jr. probably have to get a better run. Um, he'd be a solid value at the Flatman price. Like, keep it, keeping an eye on this, definitely going to be very, very important. It's just tough to say right now. If everyone's in, then I really like Miles Bridges. I think Brandon Miller is a solid play. Both the guards and Mitch and Jaman both look solid. I prefer Man now that he's cheaper, but would like both quite a bit. Nick Richards at 5K should play high 20s minutes. No Grant, especially if Grant Williams is out, might have to play a bit more. He'd be a good value at 5K. And then, um, the value. I don't know if I touch much of this value. I guess like Bertans, Poku firmly in play, especially with Graham Williams out. Um, don't mind them. So uh, yeah, tough to say right now. We'll keep an eye on it. And as always, I'll update on Reddit. All right, SGA and Jalen were out today. If they're out tomorrow, um, you know, Mark is just such a troll with that rotation, but would like Chet, would like Giddy. The ownership will probably drop. They'll be low owned. We know the ceilings they have. Tough matchup going up against Boston, but Decent amount of blowout risk here. I would like them as bounce back candidates. Lou Dort would be a decent value of 4.8K. 
And then they went with uh, they went with uh, Aaron Wiggins, Jalen Williams. In the starting lineup, if they both start again, I like them both quite a bit. And still, Isaiah Joe would be a decent value. Gordon Hayward would be playable. Um, and then I think that's it. Um, I think that's the main guys I'd have interest in here. Um, and then if they're both in, I don't think I get too much here. I think SGA, Jalen, don't like much. SGA is a fine spend up. Everyone else is overpriced. I don't get to the value here. There just wouldn't be much. Moving on to Boston here, Jalen Brown is questionable. I don't think it moves the needle on much if he's out. If he's out, sure, you can get to like a Porzingis. You can get to a Tatum. I think Porzingis is probably my favorite play on this team. It doesn't really matter if Brown's out or in. I still think he's a solid GPP play. I don't mind the spot here going up against the Thunder. Um, you know, it's not as bad of a spot as people may think it is. You know, rebounding, you know, should be able to do a ton. Good shot blocker. Has an insane ceiling. Still not priced up either. So I think Porzingis is definitely my favorite play. I think he's a good GPP play at that price point. Tatum is playable at 9-8. Jalen Brown, I think, is priced right. Same with, like, Derek, Derek White, Drew Holiday. Um, if Jalen Brown's out, Al Horford becomes playable. And I don't think I touch this value. Um, and if he's in, I still like Porzingis. And then Tatum is fine. All right, this is a game where we can get some really good plays. Keep an eye on Sasser. That's going to be important. If he's out, you're going to see a much tighter rotation with the guards and Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey. First off, Cade Cunningham, I was really high on him last late. I'm really, really high on him here again going up against Atlanta. Good spot. This game should be played super fast. Two bad teams going up against each other. Don't play a ton of defense. I'm really, really high on Cade Cunningham. Durham got injured last game, but assuming he is full go, which I would expect him to be here, I like him quite a bit. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal spot. Ivy, if Sasser's out, should play big minutes. He would be a really good play at 6.1K. Um, Wiseman got extended the last game because of the Duran injury. And then, you know, Tosan, Troy Brown. If I had to pick one, it would be Tosan. Um, and then if Sasser's in, I still have I still like Cade. I still like Ivy. It would just be a bit more risk um, with their minutes. Um, because when Sasser was in, um, Cade was only playing low 30s. Ivy's minutes were a bit more in question, but if he's out, it's going to be a lot more minutes for both of them. There'd be a good amount to like here. Um, and then let's move on to Atlanta. Good spot here for Atlanta. I love Deshante Murray at 9.9k. Phenomenal matchup going up against Detroit. I think he's one of the best spin ups on the slate. I absolutely love Deshante Murray in this spot going up against Detroit. Jalen Johnson came off the bench. Keep an eye on if he starts. If he starts, a no limit. I like him quite a bit at 7k. Good rebounder, double double upside. You know, he's done a ton more offensively this season. Really good point per minute guy. So if he starts, no limit. I like him quite a bit. Bog, I still like his ceiling at 6.9K, but I'd rather play like a Jalen Johnson, assuming Johnson does start. Capella, if Johnson starts, gets a bit of a downgrade, but I still do like him. Should play high 20s minutes. Good point per minute guy. Good spot going up against Detroit. So still interest there. Hunter, downgrade with Jalen Johnson back on this team, but still playable. Don't love it, though, but still fine. And then Bruno Fernando if with Jalen Johnson back. I don't think I'm going to get to. And then Vic Kreji, we'll, we'll, we'll just have so much better value. Um, <clears throat> if Jalen Johnson comes off the bench, we'll get Vic Kreji in the starting lineup. Finally, at a ceiling game with the team getting healthier. Um, but I, I think we'll just have so much better value to get to, in my opinion. Moving on to Indiana. So if Miles Turner is out, we're going to get uh, Jalen Smith most likely starting at the five. He would stand out as one of the best value plays in the slate. And then you're going to get Isaiah Jackson getting the backup five. He would also be a really, really good value. So would like those two quite a bit. Um, Halliburton finally had a ceiling game last game. It's an okay spot going up against Brooklyn. He'll be low owned. Obviously, he's probably going to get you close to a double. Double double. Should play high 30s minutes. Like him as a contrarian spin up, but I do give the edge to DeJounte Murray. Siakam is okay. I'd rather just get up to Halliburton at similar price points. Miles Turner, don't love it if he plays, but fine. Neesmith should be play big minutes. He's more of like a last piece in type filler play for me. TJ's priced right, and then I don't know if I get to the value. Just keep it on the Miles Turner news there. <clears throat> Moving on to Brooklyn, we have Cam Johnson probable. That's going to hurt guys like Watford. It's going to hurt guys like Dorian Finney-Smith. Watford, Dorian, at their price points, are definitely a bit overpriced with Cam Johnson back. They're both still playable, though. I like Cam Thomas once again. Um, I know he had a bad game last game due to the blowout, but pace up spot up against the Pacers, 7.7K. I still like him at this price point. If it's going to keep the ownership down, I still think he's a pretty good play. Um, so still like Cam Thomas. The ceiling's just massive with him. If he's not hitting his shots, he's going to give you a low floor anyway. If he's hitting his shots, he's going to go for like 40 plus. So I still think Cam Thomas is a pretty good play, even at almost $8,000, especially if people aren't going to want to play him. Bridges at 7K is a bit safer than Cam Thomas, but he doesn't, he doesn't 
have the ceiling that Cam Thomas does. I always just prefer ceiling in GPPs, so I'd rather just play Cam Thomas. Claxon at 6.8K. Um, minutes have ticked back down. This game was a blowout. This game, they went to a bit more Watford, more of just tournament only play for me. What they've been doing with the rotation of late with Watford, etc. I think I pref I do prefer Claxton to Miles Turner, though. Dennis Schroeder is very, very safe. Should play over 30 minutes in a close game. I, I think he's more just priced right for me. I don't think I get too much. I like, like I said, Watford, Dorian, they're both playable, but I think they're priced right now. Moving on to Orlando, probably one of my least favorite teams to target on the slate. Just absolute treacherous matchup here going up against the Pelicans. Don't love much. I guess Isaac is an okay value at 4.4K. Good point per minute guy that should play around 20 minutes. Fine. Cole Anthony is overpriced. One of Carr Jr. at 5.4K has seen increased minutes of late. One thing to keep an eye on, uh, keep a note of here. I don't mind the spot for him. He's probably my favorite play on this team at that price point. So I think one of Carr Jr. is decent at that price point. Franz, Paolo, they're just more contrarian options for me. And I think Suggs is a bit overpriced. I don't know if I touch the guards. Moving on to the Pels. So Brendan Ingram is going to remain out here. I know it's a treacherous matchup, but you still got to have interest in Zion and CJ. They're just going to run the offense here. They're going to do everything for this team. They're going to play big minutes, um, stuffing the statute. So still like CJ, still like Zion. They're not as good of plays as they have been in the past here. They're in a treacherous matchup going up against Orlando, and the price points are up, but I still think they're decent. Just not priorities, personally, for me right now. Trey Murphy at six, almost 7K um, is playable, but I think he's also getting to the price point where I think he should be. Still in play, though. Ownership's going to do a toll on what I do there. Herb Jones at 5'7", also just there for me. I think he's getting to the price point to where he should be as well. Jonas Nance, they're going to split the center position. I think this is a spot where they could play Jonas a bit more, or they can go to Nance. It only depends on what Orlando does with Wendell Carter Jr., to be honest. Um, but Nance, Jonas, they're both playable. I prefer Jonas to Nance. Najee Marshall will be in the rotation. He'll see 15 to 20 minutes. He is overpriced, in my opinion. So, yeah, mainly just the top two guys that I like here for the Pels. Moving on to Toronto. So it's a back-to-back -back here. We'll see if quickly and RJ Barrett do play. They were on a limit today, but RJ Barrett absolutely smashed. Um, so keep an eye on Trent. Bruce Brown got injured. He didn't return. Also keep an eye on OJ Abaje. If everyone's healthy here and everyone being on limit, I don't think I get to anyone here. I think uh, this team is just a cross-off, and I would expect them to be on limits. Um, so really don't like anything here for Toronto. Um, so yeah, we can just gloss right over them. Let's move on to Minnesota. I really like Anthony Edwards, and I really like Rudy Gobert. Smash matchup here for Rudy Gobert. There's just a ton of blower risk here. 7.7K. He's playing 40 minutes in competitive games. Good shot blocker. Double-double pretty much every single game. I think he looks like one of the better center options on this slave. Take a look at center. I mean, you. Uh, I really like Jaron as well. Um, but you have Giannis. You have AD. They both look phenomenal. But in this like mid-range area, I think... Gobert is one of the better plays. Um, you know, Durant, Eight and Gobert all look pretty good. You have a lot of good center plays on the slate. Um, but yeah, I do like Gobert quite a bit. Nas Reed, he has a ceiling at 6.7K. I don't mind it. Mike Conley just there for me. Guy's like a filler play for me. Statute stuffer. Probably not going to kill you. Probably not going to win you a tournament, although he has been very, very good the last three games. Um, and then Kyle Anderson, eh, McDaniels, eh, they're, eh. I feel like better plays will open up. Moving on to Memphis. So, Bain, Vince Williams, Marcus, obviously Marcus Smart, uh, Contra Doubtful, everyone else still out. So, um, looking at the rotation last game, um, I do want to pull it up. I have it up last. I have it. We saw Luke Kennard play 36 minutes. This game a blowout. No, it wasn't a blowout. So, Luke Kennard played 36 minutes, Jaron 34, and they closed with the bench. Um, so that was a bit disappointing, um, but Gigi Jackson still played 30 minutes. Santi Aldama got absolutely cooked, um, and yeah, they closed with uh, Goodwin, Lamar, or Clark, Goodwin, etc. With that being said, um, assuming Pippen starts, I still like him in GPPs. It's just the minutes have not been great of late. He got into foul trouble this game, but if we get his normal like 25, 26, 27 minutes in a really good spot going up against Milwaukee, I do still like him at 5.4K. Goodwin's in play. They're just GPP plays for me, but Goodwin at 4.4K, he's been great of late. Should play around 20 minutes at least. I think he's a solid value as well. I don't mind that. 
Um, Luke Kennard, he is a ceiling. We know he's going to chuck when he's out there, played 36 minutes. Don't mind that. I think he's decent. Aldama, just a dart for me. I really like Jaron Jackson Jr. Just with the team to himself, we know he's just going to absolutely shoot the ball a ton when he's out there. Always in foul trouble, but the ceiling is there. I always play him when he's low-owned, so if he's low-owned tomorrow, I do like him. GG's playable, but my least favorite out of the guys we just talked about outside of Aldama. I do prefer GG to Aldama. All right, keep an eye on Pat Bev. He got injured tonight in my lineup, and then keep an eye on Damian Lord. Um, if they're both out, I would assume starting lineup would be something like Giannis, Chris, Lopez, Beasley, and Jay Crowder, I think would be the lineup. So Giannis at the point would be my guess. But that being said, I absolutely love Giannis. I think he's probably the best spend up on the slate with no Dame. He would look phenomenal. Would absolutely love him, especially if he starts at the point. Would legit have triple-double upside. Had a triple-double tonight. Would love, love, love him. Chris Middleton still decent, even at this price point. His usage just goes way, way up with no Damian Lord. His potentials, his statue stuffing goes way, way up as well. Really like him still, even at 7.4K. I still think he's a good play. Bobby Portis is priced right. Brooke Lopez at 5.7K. I don't mind. And then um, Beasley is playable. And then Jake Crowder, I would like for value. And then you'll see a bit more like Pat Content at center. If they're both in, then I still really like Giannis. Dame at 8.8K, solid, assuming no limit. And then I don't know if I to like Middleton would be priced right. I don't know if I get too much else here, though. Hope you guys had a great night. I will talk to y'all in the next video.